Hello everybody, this is Danny from Deep South Homestead. We're back out at the greenhouse, guys, and we're so excited, not about the heat, but the heat has happened. And as a result, we've had to make some upgrades to the greenhouse because of the heat. I want you to come on in and I'll show you the things that we've done. Okay, we have finally got the electricity hooked to the greenhouse. It has been a job in between the gardening and everything else that we do. We have had very little time, but we finally, in between rain showers and the heat and gardening and canning and all this stuff, got the electricity ran to the greenhouse. We have it installed in here now, and we've installed a fan system that's electronically controlled. It has a humidity side to it. It has a temperature side to it. This is the uh, monitoring system that goes with it here. Now it's thermostatically controlled. It hooks into an electrical outlet over here to the side. And the fan is a louvered fan that actually fits up into the top of the greenhouse here because we have to set it based on the attic temperature of the greenhouse. Now I have the monitor in my hand right now. It says that the attic temperature is 83 degrees. Uh, technically, that's what I have it set at, I'm sorry. It is set at 83 degrees. It will not come on until it gets above 83 degrees. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the temperature down below 83 degrees and show you what it is actually like. Okay, I'm going to actually drop the temperature now. Ah, oh, the breeze. Isn't it nice? One just standing under the breeze you here. You can come outside right here if you get too hot. And you can just sit and feel the breeze blowing on you. I have it set now at, at 80 degrees in the greenhouse, uh, in the attic of the greenhouse, and that lets the fan come on. I've been leaving it at 80 degrees. It seems to be a good temperature to kind of start pulling some heat out. And it prevents the windows up there from having to open as far as they normally do because it's pulling a lot of the heat out of the attic up here. Now it works even better when we close the doors, but right now we have such a beautiful breeze blowing outside. I don't want to close the doors, plus the pollinators get in, and it's not that bad right now. But when nighttime temps start reaching too hot for the greenhouse, which will happen here in the deep south, this thing will automatically turn itself on and off. Now, when it's only within four degrees of the temperature that I set, it runs at a very slow mode. But now if it, if it heats up, let's say it reaches up to like 90 degrees, then this thing kicks into high mode and I mean it blows hard. I don't know if I can actually make that happen here or not where you can see it. There it is. I've run it down to 77 degrees. And that means it's kicked into a lot higher mode to pull a lot more air out. Now, based on the square footage of the greenhouse, this fan should be ample to, uh, to handle it. Now, let me just go ahead and kill it. And one thing I like about it is it runs very quiet. Because wanted to come out to shoot the video with me. She goes, when are you going to turn the fan on? I said, no, the fan's already on. And she looked and she said, wow, I can't even hardly hear it. So that's one other thing that we like about it. It's not so loud that it just drives you nuts while you're in the greenhouse working. And guys, it's part of living in the South. If you're going to have a greenhouse like we have here that's this luscious, it looks like a food forest jungle in here because that's actually what we're looking at here. It literally looks like a jungle inside here of nothing but luscious green plants that is literally loaded with food everywhere. We want to make sure that we can maintain this. Now, right now, I can show you over here, we have a monitor in here, we can show you something. This monitoring system we have here says that the humidity right now is 78%. Two hours ago, it was at 90 something percent. Now that the wind has started blowing, the humidity is dropping drastically and we're learning that the highest humidity is really early in the morning and as the day goes on, the humidity actually drops. And you can see the temperature right now is at 81 degrees in here. That's why I have the attic fan set at 80 to 81 degrees. 
so that when the attic temperature reaches the same as the bottom temperature, then it kicks on and begins to pull air through here. But right now, <clears throat> we have such a nice breeze blowing outside that technically the attic fan really doesn't have to run that much in order to be able to, uh, to, to keep the greenhouse cool down because we have a nice breeze blowing. Okay, guys, one of the things I like is the remote has a handy little place I can leave it sitting here. It's automatically set. I don't have to be in the greenhouse all day monitoring everything. It's really nice. I also have installed a waterproof light switch system here so that we don't have to worry about it. The light's really close to the door right here where the screen is. So this is all waterproofed. And when I flip this on, the lights around beside me that we have here in the greenhouse, you what? See how they come on? All down through here. We have lights in the greenhouse for nighttime out here. And if we decide if it's a cloudy day or something, and we want to uh, install grow lights in here, then we can use grow lights. Now these are not grow lights. They're just regular LED lights. They're 5,000 lumen. They're, you, it takes 6,500 to actually be a grow light. So these kind of help us when we're working in here late in the evening or early, early in the morning or before daylight or after dark. Really works out good. We're actively looking for some good grow lights to go in this greenhouse for nighttime and mainly for wintertime use. We're not going to be probably using them that much during the summer, but we will be using some probably during the winter months. Now, of course, we have Miss Wanda's chair hanging here. She always keeps the chair here. It's a nice place to come out here and drink a cup of coffee and sit and watch the bees pollinate everything because the bees are all into cucumbers. They're all in all the other uh, tomatoes and everything else around here, the squash and stuff, pollinating inside the greenhouse here. Uh, I keep calling it a greenhouse because I've turned it into a greenhouse, but technically it is a high sidewall, uh, high tunnel. And we have a name. And we have a name for it. Miss Wanda, Wanda named it. Yeah, I'm going to let Miss Wanda tell you what the name is. King Dome. Instead of Kingdom, like the Kingdom of Heaven, She's named it the King Dome because it's in a dome shape. So that's probably what we'll call this is the King Dome. That's Ms. Wanda's name for that. Um, I think we'll go with that. One of the reasons she came up with this name is because our last name is King and the greenhouse is in a dome shape. And it's like walking into Eden when you walk in here because everything is luscious and green and beautiful and productive. And it gives you that sense of being in Eden so it's, I think it's going to be a fitting name. Now this is not going to be a greenhouse tour, but I will show you a few things we have going on in the greenhouse and why we're putting forth this much effort to make sure that it really works like it's supposed to. Okay, well, first of all, is our bell peppers here. Look at these nice bell peppers. Now what we like about this is, look at here. I didn't prune this one back where it would bush out a lot. I just left it grow up as two tall plants here because we're in the greenhouse, and I probably will eventually put a stake down beside them. But in the greenhouse here, they're not so apt to get blown over like they are in a field. Even though they're screen out here, the wind can still knock them over. Now, I'm not saying it won't, but it's not as likely to. But now, let's move down and let me show you some of our other peppers. This is one of our banana peppers here, and we do have nice banana peppers starting on them. Look at that, guys. That thing's... That pepper's already... Almost harvestable. It's almost harvestable, yeah, look at that. We got like three or four so I far, got, and tiny ones and Look blooms. in the back, they're all back in there. Now this plant's leaning over because uh, I came out here to water, and I got a little slap happy with a water hose, and I flew around and bumped it and knocked it over, but um, I'm probably going to put a stake in here because this one gets loaded up with peppers, it's probably going to fall over. But let's look at some squash now. Now here we have the Bennings Green Tent Patty Pan from Hall's Tool. Look at this thing, guys. Look how big this thing is. Yeah, Look at the peaches. Ah. Look at those peaches up under there. Look at them Empress peaches in here. Those things are blemish free right now. We've got little squashes. Look at that. Little squash. One under the bottom too. One down yonder. We well, we got a male bloom down yonder, and uh, we got one already hanging down down here. Yeah, I've been pruning. Believe it or not. I'm in the greenhouse. I'm still pruning my squash. I've had to prune a few leaves off of these. These things but go look, crazy. Put your hand on it. Look how look, big. Look at this. I got a big hand. Look at this. Things Isn't that are, awesome? Things are huge. 
And then we have some Marconis over here that's blooming. They're doing pretty good. But then, you know, and I haven't really said a lot about it, but I prune my cucumbers just like I do my squash or anything else. All, most of the bottom leaves Most of the bottom off. leaves I've pruned off. They're and we've all, still got... Still a few i got to prune off of here, but we still got pickles down here, guys. Look at them. Cucumbers. They ain't yeah. pickles yet. Not yet, they ain't. But look. Okay, so we got two here. Look here. There. There's there. two or three more. There's four or five more there. If I open In this up. In the back. Look, look, way back yonder hanging. Ah! Oh, way back yonder. Yep. It's about ready. Here. Look over here. Right there. Up here. Look at this. Right here. Guys, I can just keep going up this thing. I mean, and then look how tall. This is the Jolly Green Giant. Yeah, I can reach, I can touch an eight foot ceiling. Look at this. This thing is eight foot already, and it's running across over here. And oh, look at here. Ta da! Another one right here. We got. Daisy's cucumber. happy too. Daisy's happy too, I guess. Yeah, but anyway, we got cucumbers everywhere. This thing's working beautifully. We Jolly got, Green cucumbers. I just love it. And we have, Ms. Wanda has some uh, Anasazi beans here that we're letting go to seed. Now we're starting to notice they're starting to turn their colors here. The plants are starting to, uh, they're starting to get ready. The plants taking the plants on. plants taking on their, their, their dying stage because we've not picked them. We've just left them. There's beans in here everywhere. If you move these vines around, look, look at all the beans. They're just, these are strictly this year. Look at them. These are only for seed this year. These are not for eating because we just had a couple in a little small pack. We wanted to try to... Well, they won't cross with those? We just wanted to leave a few here so we'd have them for... Uh, and if nothing else, we'll eat a few dry beans out of them. Or I'll grind them for... We'll grind them for flour or whatever, but... And here we mixed it. I mentioned this in one of our other videos. We stuck a few peppers in with our Cherokee yellow wax beans because the yellow wax beans are not going to last a long time. They'll eventually die out in the heat. And then we'll have this pepper, this one, and this one left in here. And those are the California Wonder bell peppers. So we've got those stuck in. And then look over here. We have another Benning's green tent patty pan. Look at that. Beautiful little squash there. One right there. Another one here, yeah. These We're going to have are... patty pans before long. Woo! We got squash now, so maybe we don't know what to do with them. But And Daisy's still happy. Cows are still happy. That's the beauty of looking in the greenhouse. You can actually look out at the cows right there. And the cabin. And the cabin. It's all within viewing range. And then we come on down. The tomatoes are almost pulled up because of the leaf curl. Look at this. Put your hand there, the size Look of these. Look at the size of those tomatoes. They're almost like they're going to bust, and they're green. Look at that, how big those tomatoes are. Just hanging, and this is the plants I was going to pull up. So, we're going to leave them. Oh, I do see a culprit right here. I see a stink bug. Can't have him in here. He must, mm -hmm. They come in when the door is open. You have to, that's what you still have to watch. And then we have the other tomato plants here. Look at these things, guys. Look at I want you to just look at the tomatoes on these things when I move them to the side. Look at all the tomatoes in here. Y'all know what we're going to be doing. Look, we are going to have look, tomatoes. This is not the half of it. I've got a hundred plants in the front field up there that's probably twice the size of these because they were planted way earlier. And we got a bunch over yonder. Some Guys, at the cabin. Some at the cabin. We've got the Rutgers at the cabin. Ms. Wanda's got the Hoss Tool varieties over at the Tashi cabin. Tashi and Bellarosa. Yeah, the Bellarosa and the Tashi. So over 125 to 150 tomato probably plants. Got probably close to 150 tomato plants right now that are all loaded. With Somebody's going to be making tomato something. We're going to be making sauce, salsa, ketchup, dehydrated, dehydrated uh, little pizza, pizza tomatoes. tomatoes. Just Anything that our hearts desire can think of. But guys, I ain't, I'm, uh, let me show you one more thing around here. Okay, guys, these are our red roaster peppers. This is the number one selling pepper in the nation. Uh, last year, it was the number one selling pepper. It took me forever to find these seeds, but I found them, and I grew a couple of plants here. 
And I want you to notice we had a few little bit of, we had some aphid problems starting on them. And what I've done was I brought Ms. Wonders, I mentioned this in another video, I brought her spearmint up here, or peppermint, I'm sorry, brought her peppermint up here. And, am I right? Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, okay, I thought it was peppermint. Looking at the leaf, it says peppermint. Yeah. Uh, I brought the peppermint up here and set it in amongst the pepper right here. And you know what happened? The aphids went away. So, what a thing to learn. Now, it hasn't done anything for the few little white flies we see around in here. But, but we have something coming for those. We got something coming to handle look them. At the look at the look blooms, at the little, blooms. little pepper. Woo. Hopefully, at some point, we're going to have roaster peppers. That's... This is probably my favorite pepper. This pepper will get about that long and about that big around. And it's kind of... Sweet, sweet, sweet. It's very sweet. Especially if you let it go till it gets red. And Miss Wanda goes uh, to the grill and grills them. And... Yep. That's... Guys, mm. you just don't know unless you've had a sweet red roaster. And then right in the midst of this, we stuck us a bouquet dill. We got these from Hoss Tool, the seeds. I had them planted, and a rain came and flooded the uh, thing I had in it. And actually ruined most of them, but one of them, or two of them, should I say here, there's two of them there, actually pulled out, and we're going to have a dill. Now, dill is also a good insect deterrent for lots of other plants here. So we're going to be using the dill in here, along with the peppermint, to help control insects. Okay, guys, another thing I want to mention to you, this one this week harvested basil, flat leaf, flat leaf Italian parsley, and the curly leaf parsley because it was up to like two feet tall and it needed to be cut back really bad and she's dehydrated that now and we're going to be putting that into some little jars and keeping it so we can use it uh, as a matter of fact that's one of the things we'll probably use the basil on the little tomatoes we talked about when we make the tomato pizzas when we get so many of them when she dehydrates those a little parmesan cheese a little shredded up basil like that dehydrated with tomatoes makes a little tomato pizzas and they're fantastic so guys i didn't want to turn this into a full-blown tour you got to see some of the things in the greenhouse you got to see the fan system we have in here you got to see now we have electricity everything's electronic now in here we are so happy about that our next big thing will be the irrigation system and as soon as we get that installed it'll all be where it takes care of itself danny and wanda won't have to come out here with hoses and water anything anymore it will automatically do it itself now that we have electricity in here to run timers and stuff like that with the food forest here at the King Dome is fixing to become where it takes care of itself. All we have to do is come in and monitor it, check for bugs, pick the luscious fruit that's in here, and enjoy the fruits of our labor. So thank you guys from Deep South Homestead.